After Kotelia, who do you think has had a significant contribution to India's strategic culture? Well, it's the question of continuity and change. Things do change permanently, yet certain core patterns uh, <coughs> remain. So it's uh, the concept of pattern remaining change. So here we have Kautilya 2,300 years ago. But uh, then comes Kamandaka, 800 years later, Guptas. Then uh, <coughs> we have the Mughals. And if you look closely look at uh, uh, <coughs> the Mughal uh, um, system of government, we will find lots of echoes. Um, even so, it's a Persian uh, Muslim uh, system. Uh, there is, there is pa pattern uh, being maintained. And even the British, uh, I mean, uh, the British didn't conquer India just by force, but by diplomatic and intelligence tricks, more than economic leverage, more than military leverage. Where did they take it from? They took it from the uh, Persian Mughal uh, tradition, which itself is being built upon the Hindu uh, tradition. Now, in terms of modern India, I think it's, uh, uh, it's very important. I do not just mean the latent presence of Kautilian thought figures in the general population via uh, Chanakya Nitis and things like that, but let's take Nehru. Nehru studied the Atta Shastra carefully while he was in prison. I mean, he knew his uh, Atta Shastra and, he, and you can see it in uh, the discovery of India. And what I see now is, again, things have changed. India is uh, in a much more powerful, qualitatively more powerful position than it was under uh, Nehru. But uh, uh, it's now that uh, within the Indian strategic community, um, uh, you see various signs of a reawakened interest in Kautilya and the Atta Shastra. Um, that's something new, but it's not really new because it's simply part of a long continuity in midst of all that change.